Hello, hello, hola amigos, amigas. Welcome to Lima once again. Welcome to your home in Lima. Thanks a lot for visiting me today to join another cooking session here in Peru and Lima, the South American capital of the culinary of this beautiful and diverse part of the world welcomes you into another session. And in this occasion, we are going to do something very easy, really, really easy. Uh, it's going to be a salad. And we're going to also show you how the pisco sour is done. So, um, well, first of all, uh, we're going to also begin with a salad and then we're going to do the pisco sour because pisco sour needs to be, you know, like a drink right away after we finish. And if we drink before, maybe the salad is going to end up being something different. So, <laughs> hola, hola, hello. Let me say hi to the people joining. Hola, amigos. Hello, Joanne. Thanks for coming. Hola, Katy. Hola, Ruth. Thanks for coming back to Lima. Hello, Karen. Hola, hola, Joy, Lynn, Thelma. Hola, hola, Chelsea, Janet. Thanks for coming. And there's more people coming in this moment. So I will give uh, them some minutes. Uh, this is going to be a, a let's say, fast cooking show but i think this salad can go really good with any event in which you want to let's say like cook for example pork or you want to do turkey or do you want to do maybe chicken and you want to let's say uh, mix a little bit the meat with something uh that is a little bit lighter but also uh, that has very good taste hola jb hello hi Anne. So before we begin, we are uh, to be soon in the holidays uh, of the end of the year, you know, the, the final, the last season, uh, let's say, of the year of celebrations. So I can imagine everybody is quite busy and also excited for uh, the upcoming events, especially now that, well, the world is coming back to how it used to be before the pandemic so thanks a lot for taking the time to to spend with me here uh in this day by the way we're beginning this tour at more or less 12 this is 12 uh, uh 12 4 actually in noon in lima so it began at midday at noon um and if you have a question please comment here in the uh, in the chatting zone, we have a beautiful chat section where we can get in touch, connect, uh, converse a little bit, and I can learn from you and you can learn a little bit from me too. So now that the group is uh, already here and ready, hola, Katy, uh, and we're going to do, by the way, Katy, the pisco sour in this occasion. Um, so before we begin, let me introduce myself properly. My name is Vanessa Vasquez. I am your Lima City Tour Guide. And in every occasion, I try to show you something different of my home of Lima. I live in Lima, the capital of Peru. Peru is a big country. It is really like two, size, uh, two times uh, Texas. So it's huge. <laughs> Just to give you an idea how big Peru is. And it's a very diverse land. So uh, when we talk about Lima, we are not necessarily talking about how people in Cusco live or are or what people in Cusco eat. Lima is very, very unique in many senses. So, uh, hola, Aaron, hello, Katy, five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> yes, of course, oh, there's always 5 p.m. somewhere that just to, to have a nice shot of, you know, pisco. Uh, and in this occasion, something more glamorous like pisco sour. Okay, so well, we're going to begin. And uh, let me tell you first of all what we're going to be cooking. This is, oh, by the way, this very nice mm, decoration I have here in my in my head is just allegoric of the uh, New Year's Eve uh, in Peru. We dressed up in Jello for uh, New Year's Eve for receiving the next year because Jello is the color associated with good luck. So, um, by the way, I want to invite you to my um, upcoming event of uh, New Year's Eve. It's going to be exactly at 12, at midnight. So, please come join. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, well, let me tell you, first of all, uh, the name of the uh, dish we're going to be doing today is a salad. And it is usually known as Christmas salad. But a Christmas salad is... 
you know, like prepared on Christmas Eve and also or consume on Christmas Eve and also on New Year's Eve because it is really delicious and we love to eat turkey or pork in, in both nights. So it goes very well with that um, type of meat. So, well, first of all, we need the following and please take notes. If you cannot take notes in this occasion, no worries, because I will be uploading this event in my YouTube channel. You can go to Adventurous Travel Guide uh, in YouTube, and also you can visit my profile in Hago, and there is a link to my YouTube, so you can see all my previous cooking sessions there. So uh, we're going to be kneading potato. This is boiled potato. Uh, I boiled it earlier today. It still is a little bit warm, but better don't just like a after boiling, put it in the salad because it's going to get a little bit mushy. So um, it has to be like warm or cold at least, no? So this is uh, a variety of potato called Jungai. So in Peru, we have over 4,000 kinds of potatoes and we never get bored of potatoes here. So a uh, Jungai potato is a variety that is good for boiling. Mm? So it's not like the yellow potato, or I think you call it golden potato, that when you boiled, that potato, it, you know, like a mush is, like gets a mush very soon. So this one is a little bit more like has consistency. So approximately we need three cups, or if you have a bit of bigger family, four cups could be good of a boiled potato in cubes, as you can see. Huh? So this is the first thing we're going to be doing. And by the way, this recipe will be good for about a person, let's say, at the, at the end. So the next thing we're going to need is this. This is already boiled, uh, zanahorias and albergitas. So carrots uh, and uh, green peas. So we need them boiled as well. We need approximately three quarters of a cup of each one three quarters of a cup of each one. So I just boil them too. They are cold already and they are here in this uh, nice container. So um, more or less, let's say nothing is written in stone, you know, but more or less three quarters of a cup of each one and three cups of potato, as I said before. So uh, we need also apples and we're going to be cutting the apples right away, you know, because when you uh, cut the apples, um, with anticipation, they oxide, they turn a little bit like a dark. So we want them to look fresh and look pretty. So we need one red apple and one green apple. See, um, the variety that you prefer for salad. Okay. Uh, but it has to be, you know, one that if you go to a market console, which one is better for, for salad, you know, ladies in the market know everything. So we need one and one. Okay. So what else? Uh, we need also, well, this is something interesting because my husband doesn't like um, celery, but uh, traditionally this recipe has celery, three quarters of cup of celery. But if you don't want to, you know, use celery because some people don't like celery, I understand, of course. Maybe you can replace it with, uh, could be um, a cucumber, I think it's called, cucumber. So we have, Cucumber or pepino in Spanish. So again, three quarters of a cup of cucumber. Chop also in uh, in cubes. Uh, we need also the following, pecans. So, oh, by the way, my husband is part Polish, so I, that's why I have a cup that says Polska, Polska, Polska. So um, we need, uh, uh, well, pecanas, pecans, okay? So more or less three quarters of a cup of pecans and you need them to be chopped as you can see like not uh, smashed uh, sometimes people prefer to smash because they don't like you know the texture but for it, this salad the texture is necessary so you need if it's okay for you of course if you prefer just less so you know you can embrace this salad and, and do as you wish. But this is the traditional way how we do it. So uh, we have chopped, um, cut in, in, in little pieces of uh, pecans. Okay, so three quarters of a cup. We need also duraznos. Okay, so 
I am not uh, advertised by, you know, or paid by this brand, by the way, one day maybe. Um, so these are duraznos or peaches. So peaches uh, in can, uh, um, they will add also a very nice blend of sweet and salty. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to be needing more or less approximately three quarters again, uh, because the measure for this recipe will be three quarters of a cup. Or you can, if you have more people, you can just just one cup for, for everything, okay? So we need the uh, peaches. We need also what we call jamón inglés. Jamón inglés. Um, so this is English ham. Well, if I want to translate it literally, that's what it will say. Uh, I don't know if you find it in a different way and with a different name. So this is jamón inglés or English ham. Mm -hmm. So this is, let's say, the, the element that will also add this flavor of, you know, like a, a meat. Mm -hmm. And we are going to need also mayonnaise, mayonesa. Oh, so maybe you can do it at home. You can also, you know, buy it. Um, so in this occasion, it would be okay to, to use the consistency of the mayo that comes like uh, you can buy on a store. Uh, sometimes for other type of salads, you will need the mayonnaise to be a little more loose or more liquidy, but this is not the, the occasion. So you can use this one and this is going to be coming at the end. We also need one key lime mm -hmm. one key lime now uh, that's going to give also a very nice touch uh, that's almost at the end also and we are going to need uh salt and pepper okay so also later we're going to be cooking for you uh or doing for you preparing for you and i say we because my husband is here by the way so you're going to meet Marek, my husband, in a little while. Um, and we're going to be preparing pisco sour. Okay, so first of all, I will need a bowl to start with the mixing of the products. So let me show you my chosen bowl of today. And we tour guys, I am an official tour guide, by the way, born and raised in Lima, Peru, but I used to be a trip leader. I used to take travelers to different parts of Peru. <laughs> and uh, one of the things I used to do, I used to collect was plates, uh, handmade and painted in Cusco. So this is uh, one of those beautiful bowls that in Cusco you can buy. By the way, every once in a while, my colleague Mike in Cusco does uh, shopping tours here in Hago. So you can go to one of his tours, buy things with him, and later he sends things away to you. So anyways, this is one of the things I bought in person and it was made in a community in Urubamba. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be using this bowl for today. And now we're going to move, move a little bit the camera. So in that way, we are going to incorporate things. Oh, by the way, uh, we're going to also do the cutting of the apples because remember I haven't, um, done yet the cutting the proper cutting of the apples so okay so we have this here and we're going to put the bowl somewhere else because we don't need it right away so how are you doing guys how has been life these days i've been missing you also um my my season really has come to them my working season has come to an end in peru we had had some uh issues with the uh, let's save some protests. If you've been in my tours before, probably you know that I've done some special also events about uh, the state of emergency in which we are in Peru. And although things are now quiet and peaceful, unfortunately, many travelers have decided not to come to Peru in this season, which is really sad. And uh, well, it means that we have a vacation, a forced vacation, many of us tour guides uh, uh, in this moment, because, well, as you know, uh, there are no much tourism coming to Peru. So I will be submerging my virtual tours this upcoming weeks because I love to work. And if I don't work, I feel very sad. So 
I will be doing a lot of these virtual events for you, showing you Lima, and hopefully some people will see Lima at some point and will say, oh, Lima is so pretty, so beautiful. Let's go to, to Lima. Let's go to see Lima in person. So um, I will be, <laughs> yes, Ruth, I will be um, cutting out the, um, the apple, see? So remember, we need one red and one green apple um, so we have a very nice very crispy at some point also salad that is coming ahead you know that you are going to be able to see uh, in its full in, in preparation from beginning to end peru is a land of lots of influences uh we have salads that really are not originally from here that we have switch like a little bit of them to to include for example potatoes in those or uh sometimes um let's say all the dishes like with chili you know like elements that are very very traditional of the peruvian cuisine um but well originally they are not or salads created here in in peru uh, this one to be very honest i am not very sure the origin hola susana thanks for coming uh, by the way, um, we are always very happy to receive our, our colleagues and, and friends from different parts of the world. Uh, this week, by the way, I, I, was, I visited um, some of my colleagues, for example, Mike uh, in Cusco. He did a very nice tour um, of a fair that happens just for, for Christmas. And uh, also I went to see Leslie yesterday in Egypt. So how beautiful it is to be able to support each other's, uh, also the tour guys, uh, like learning from each other's also. So I am really honored when I see uh, colleagues coming to, to see my, my tours and, and getting to see what we have in, in Lima, in Peru. And also would like to know if anyone is new to Hago today that is coming for the first time to Hago. Or maybe for the first time to my, my cooking classes. Um, if there's anyone that is for the first time here, please let me know with a thumbs up, with a heart. Um, it is a, a pleasure to, to give you also the welcome into, into Hago, if it's the first time here for you, or into my uh, tours. Uh, so if you have been before, muchas gracias. Thanks for your support and for your friendship. Um, so this salad, as I said before, is great for this season for us because we are in summer. Oh, Kathy, gracias. Thanks for your tip support. Gracias, amiga. Thank you so much. And by the way, amigos, amigas, as you know, this platform is completely free to join. Every event is free and just tip supported. We tour guys don't really generate any income from, you know, Hago. It is you and your generosity that helps us to continue creating these events. Um, so thanks a lot. And if you wish to support this event, for example, by the way, we uh, share uh, every tip every bit of your generosity with Hago for Hago to continue existing, you can support this event until even the end of this tour. Also, uh, um, you don't need to be hesitated to, to do it right away, but muchas gracias ahead of time. Thank you so much ahead of time. So, uh, no one new in the group? No worries. I'm so happy that you are, uh, you know, like a visiting a cooking class. I don't know if cooking classes for you in, in Hago uh, have been easy to follow. My classes are very easy. And also I am writing a cooking book, a cookbook for everyone who wants to uh, continue doing this, this um, say cooking at home for other occasions. So later I'll tell you how you can access to that cookbook. So what I've done is cooking uh, sorry, cutting, cooking, cutting the um, two apples, the red one and the green one. I'm going to also clean my my uh, 
cutter. I don't know how, how this is called, by the way. We say tabla de picar, cutting, you know, board. Is that okay? So we're going to now take our pieces of peach durazno in Spanish. And we have another cup uh, of Poland, from Poland, Polska, Polska. <laughs> so we have another one over here. Vanessa, when this salad is ready to do, uh, to ready, do you serve it immediately or can you keep it in the fridge? Yes, Katty, you can keep it in the fridge if you have, like, for example, if you put a, a plastic, a, a plastic fold on top. Uh, so in that way, it will not be like, sort of like ruin or look like if we keep this for longer, you know, like cut outside, uh, uh, it's going to oxide. It's going to turn red. So we don't want that. Um, my recommendation is that if possible, that this should be the last thing you should do uh, before, you know, serving everything, right? Uh, so give priority to all the rest and you do this salad at the, at the end. Mm -hmm. So we are cutting now the peaches. Uh-huh. Cutting board. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it was easy, right? Uh, tabla de picar in Spanish. Cutting board. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we have uh, enough for our measure. I think we have actually enough. Uh, so this is a very informal class, amigos. All my classes are very informal. Uh, I want you to feel as if you were cooking here in my kitchen with me. I have a project, to be honest, that in some point uh, we are going to open our, our kitchen to in-person tours, cooking tours. Uh, so if you come to Lima, maybe next year, let me know it, please. So maybe I can take you to my kitchen and we can cook together. Um, so we're going to just put this in the fridge, the rest of the uh, peaches. Hmm? And we're going to do something really, really interesting now. We're going to mix everything. So let me move this on one side. Uh -huh. And let me bring the bowl here today we are having a very warm day in lima we are in summer uh, summer solstice uh was you know just a few days ago so we are although look the sky let me just turn the i don't know if you can see it well but it is well it's gray actually the sky maybe you are not looking at it because of the brightness of the sun but the sky is very gray today uh, so we are having this a normal days of gray sky um it should be different uh, it should be more blue sky no but the climate is a little bit crazy so now we're going to put the potato uh, in the bowl I think actually I put a little bit more than three cups in this in this bowl. So uh, what I did was first of all I cut I cut the potatoes in cubes and uh, I put water to uh, to heat and when it was boiling the water I added this potato and I let it there for more or less ten minutes. So when it was al dente, when it was ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to put this here. So we have our potatoes now. This is the Christmas salad. So then we're going to put, I think the bowl is going to be not enough big. Yeah. Okay. This is for eight people. Ah, but my family is only of five. So 
this is something we will be sharing with my mom with friends you can do this for new year's eve or for any special occasion that you consider uh, that is you know like a, you want to change a little bit your traditional recipe mm -hmm. we're going also to add the apple oh it's coming out so abundant Mari, we're going to split this i think in two bowls because you know we peruvians love to eat a lot uh -huh. excellent so a little bit for later Mm. Half and half, okay? So we, if you do this, you're going to have enough for all the family, the neighbors, everybody. Half here and half here. So going to mix. Uh, going to mix. We're going now to add, well, remember, you can add celery if you like celery. Hola, Marilu. Hello. Thanks for coming. Hola. Hello, Elizabeth. Hola, Martina. So you can use celery or if you don't like celery, for example, my husband doesn't like celery. Uh, but he likes the salad, so uh, I am replacing it for cucumber, okay? So I'm going to put, the reason why I'm splitting is because my bowl ended up being too small. So I am splitting this here in two, okay? Mm -hmm. We are going to add also the pecans. Okay. We are going to move a little bit more. The idea with the potato, uh, you know, not boiling it more than 10 minutes, if possible, a little bit less, is that because you're going to be mixing everything, uh, if it's too overcooked, it's going to get like a mush. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to add the uh, ham. This is what we call English ham. Hmm? Okay. By the way, the ham, I bought 200 grams of ham. 200 grams. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this here. And we have here the peach. The measure for most of the uh, ingredients was three quarters of a cup. If you have a big bowl, you will not need to do what I've done, which is splitting everything. Uh-huh. But you know, this is a small house and a little family. So we had to just do this as an alternative. Okay. Woo. How is it looking like? <laughs> Mary Lou, hello. We're going also to do the following. Our key lime, we're going to squeeze in here. And I will show you my favorite tool to do that. You have to get one of this if you have the chance. Uh, in Peru, in every market, you can find a squeezer of, you know, key lime. We have a bigger one for oranges. Yes, of course, Mary Lou. At uh, the end, we will be doing a quick recap. And also remember Mary Lou, you can come to my 
YouTube channel. I will be uploading this cooking session there uh, it, for you to see it as many times as you prefer, maybe to share with, with friends, uh, with, you know, like relatives. So this is the mama and this is the child uh, for oranges and for uh, key limes. So we will now continue. We need to put the flavor now. So where is my spoon? Just give me a second, I'll take a spoon here. So we need now salt and pepper, okay? Yes, Mary Lou, yes, yes, yes. It's, it's a really good salad. It's the classical salad uh, of Christmas. Uh, but also it goes good in New Year's Eve uh, because we usually, you know, it, we, we wait all the year to, to eat this, you know. And, you know, with Christmas it's not enough. So usually we repeat or we do something quite alike for New Year's Eve. Let me check also here. This Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more of salt. A little bit more. And don't leave, please, because we're going to have our uh, pisco sour session in a moment for your celebration of New Year's Eve Peruvian style. Remember that I have tomorrow a tour to a market. We're going to learn about how we, or what we shop in, I think we're going straight here. Just a pinch of this. Uh, um, what we shop for New Year's Eve in Peru, in Lima. I will show you the yellow underwear. I will show you all the decorations for the house for good luck. Some of these things you can also buy probably uh, at home and you can save for New Year's Eve. So this is going to be a fun, fun tour. Mm, 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 mm. And finally, remember that this salad should be just in one bowl, but I am a, a person of a minimalistic person. <laughs> so I have not really big bowls. This should be for eight portions, okay? So four, four. So let me open this. Uh, uh, I'm opening the mayo, but my husband is helping me to open the mayo. So in this occasion, I am using a, you know, mayonnaise from the market, from the store. Um, but in another occasion, I will show you how to do the mayonnaise. I actually have done it once with a octopus with olive sauce uh, but I will do it again for another uh, event see so we're going to add actually in total you know it's, it's really up to you more or less one cup uh, for the full preparation huh? but it's really up to you up to uh, your taste but the mayo is going to give it a really great flavor. Mm, look at this. Look how it's turning. Oh, so delicious, so colorful. This spatula also is really helpful because it's gentle. If you are using something like harder, uh, probably you're going to have some troubles. You know, we're going to, to cut the, 
the potatoes, you know, that have to be al dente, you know, well cooked. But uh, if you use a hard spoon, no, maybe you're going to smash the potatoes. So try to use the spatula like this one here. Oh, fantastic. So you have almost ready your salad for this is a Peruvian classic. Nowadays is a Peruvian classic. I think a little bit more. How do you think about this, this salad? Amigos, amigas, would you like to do it? Let me know it. Also, you are invited to my event of tomorrow at the market. And if you can, please share with me tomorrow while we are in the tour your New Year's Eve traditions. I will be bringing not just the Peruvian traditions, also the uh, Latin American New Year's Eve traditions. So it's going to be a fun tour because you're going to learn about traditions, New Year's Eve traditions in different parts of Latin America. Mm -hmm. So, but don't be shy, please share your traditions. If you come from Europe or North America or Asia, please share those traditions with us. So I think it's done. So it, I will be serving this salad in a moment on another plate that I love. So it's also from Cusco. Look at this prettiness. Gracias, Anne, thank you. Thanks for your tip support. Mm -hmm. This is a Actually, it's quite old. It has many years. You can see that also it is so old that it broke a little bit here, but I love it. It's very, very unique. These are patterns that are used in the Andes, in textiles. Oh, these are like hummingbirds and flowers. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Lou. And I bought it many years ago uh, in one of my trips to Cusco, to Urubamba. So um, I will, of course put this very nice plate or uh, we'll use this very nice plate for our final presentation which comes in a moment and now i will use my spoon my wooden spoon and i will put this in the middle so i hope it looks really nice so this really makes a difference hmm? Mmm, so one more, not much because if not, we ruin the pat the patterns of the flowers and the birds. Okay, so here we have our two beautiful plates. Just wait for me. I'm going to put them in the uh, table and Marik is preparing for the class a uh, pisco sour. Ah, uh, so Marek, say hi to everybody. Hello. Uh, Hello. Let me move this up here. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> uh, so now we need something to drink for the New Year's Eve, yeah, and for to contain our salad and our meal. So we prepare the traditional Peruvian pisco sour. So this is my my toast, a blender. Mm -hmm. A shaker, excuse me. A shaker. This drink is better to make on shaker, but you can also use a blender. Mm -hmm. So I need here the Pisco, Demonio de los Andes, or Devil from the Andes. It's a very, very good Pisco. And the variety Quebranta is the driest Pisco. Because Pisco is like wine, it's made on grapes. And you have seven different varieties of grapes for making Pisco. So depending on the grape you like, so it's uh, the drink you, the flavor of the drink you will have. Anki Branta is the driest one, so it's the best for making the pisco sour. My own sear. Sugar syrup. Mm -hmm. Just sugar. Limon. No. Key lime. Uh, key lime, the traditional Peruvian key lime. One egg. And this is bitter, amargo de angostura. This is a concentrate of bitter herbs that gives a, a little uh, smell to the drink at the end. Okay, 
So first of all, let's start from the uh, beginning. Mm -hmm. I need a desk, also for the limes. I need a knife and this lime squeezer. The first thing you need to, okay, we'll put this down to, in order you to see this. Ah, okay, 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 it's nice. Is the egg, okay? First time, I Ah, <laughs> piscina. Was, uh, pisco. pisco uh, because sí. it's also a drink named piscina. Ah, it's piscina. also another drink that name is named piscina, and it's uh, with a fruit of juices. With a juice fruit, it's based on pisco also. I was a bartender for for many years uh, when I was young. <laughs> for it's the pisco silly. sour, we use just the white of the egg. I put the uh, white first uh, because if you uh, if you don't do it well. So you can make it again. If you put in the end and the yolk falls in, so you need to trash, uh, to throw out everything. And in that way, no. So, okay, I made it well. So I put the white. Then we need the pisco. Okay, here in the piece with the pisco, I open this pisco. Uh -huh. I need here the knife. It's a new pisco, specially by today for you, my friends. Yes, we wanted this event to be a special, and we wanted you to have the chance of enjoying, you know, something different for your for your New Year's Eve event, and if possible, something you know like Peruvian, no? Mm -hmm. Pisco is the brandy based on grapes. So we use the measures. We have uh, one ounce and one ounce and a half. Normally we use three ounces of Pisco, but I will make two drinks just for Vanessa and for me. So we use four times this one and a half ounce here. Or six. <laughs> Let's have a party. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. We will not drive today, so yay! <laughs> you can have fun. Now the measure is three one one. That means three ounces of pisco, one ounce of sugar syrup, in this case two, because I use six of, of pisco. Sugar syrup is basically just sugar. Just sugar, uh -huh. plain sugar. Uh, <laughs> Caroline prepared pisco, pisco in Chile. Mm -hmm. Piscina, not piscina. No, it, it's the autocorrect. <laughs> it's correct, it's the autocorrect. The autocorrect okay. is, oh. Oh, Caroline, I have so many problems with the autocorrect. Every uh -huh. time I do a post in Hago, I see, oh no, it's so badly made because it autocorrects to Spanish. <laughs> okay, we do it that nut, the, the squeezer, the lemon juice. At the end, Marek, you have to tell them again the, the, yes, the amounts. Uh -huh. So they can take notes on that. So this is one, and with the second one. That's one ounce. That's one ounce. Uh huh. One lemon more. And we're going to an, for another ounce. Let's just do a little bit here. Mm -hmm. So I squeeze three lemons to have two ounces. And at the end, okay, we have here one egg white, three ounces of pisco, three ounces of 
uh, sugar syrup. Uh, no, we have here twice this, but the measure is three, one, one. That means for one drink, three ounces of pisco, one ounce of sugar syrup, and one ounce of lemon juice, okay? I make two here for Vanessa and for me. So I use six, two, and two. And at the end, you add the uh, ice. Mm -hmm. Not at the beginning. The ice is go goes in the end. Why not in the beginning, Marek? Uh, because if you use it in the beginning, you will uh, liquefy your drink. Huh? This is just a moment for have contact with the ice. Exactly. Now, so the order is important yes. in, in drinks like this one. So we don't want that, uh, the, the, let's say the drink will be more like a watery than necessary, no? And that's why it is the ice just to, let me just move la, so and that way everybody can see you. So let's move with the tongs with the upper part. Mm -hmm. We we'll have pisco sour, no pisco shower. Mm -hmm. Pisco shower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, with that sound, why change the sound, Marek? When you are moving... Yes, because the ice is uh, melting. Mm -hmm. mm. So when you have like a silent sound in your inside your blender, that means that... Let me just move the camera down. Uh-huh. And a little bit down. Down. Okay. You can make also in the shaker. Mm -hmm. If you prefer. But I always prefer the flavor of the blender. And at the end, I have here a very important ingredient. This is Amargo de Angostura. This is a bitter that came, it's not Peruvian, it came from the Caribbean, from Tobago, uh, specifically. Let's open this. Yeah, so this drink is, it's a really interesting combination of different influences. We have the Pisco, which is a brandy that was only possibly made in Peru because of the conquest and the arrival of the conquistadors. Mm -hmm. Without the uh, yeah. connection or contact with the, uh, the the old world, we would not be able to have something yeah. like also, this. The technique of sour is a technique that is English, uh -huh. right? because the original recipe, recipe is with whiskey, but here we made it with Pisco. Exactly. The egg gives the consistency to the drink, and this element is important in order to kill the possible smell of the egg. Also, well, you're not killing the smell, but you are like camouflaging the smell a little bit, you know, so it's not literal. <laughs> but um, Marek likes the, you know, like killing and destroying. <laughs> but um, in that way, you camouflage a little bit the How much? flavor or three drops of the smell enough. of the egg white. Mm -hmm. so. Three drops is enough. Uh, for uh, adding a really nice perfume to the uh, pisco sour. So this is a pisco sour. You see a little greenish, uh, the color of the lime, a little foam on the top, one finger maybe, and three drops of uh, Amargo de Angostura. So we, this is a pisco sour, Peruvian pisco sour. One, before we, we put it to the table, Mare, can you tell them again the measures, like how much of each one uh, you, you've used? Yes, for one drink, three ounces or three measures, because you can use, for example, a little glass, no? Three measures of pisco, one measure of sugar syrup, and one measure of Key lime juice. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One yolk and three drops of uh, bitter. Four or five cubes of ice, no more. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So now we're going to put everything on the table, Marek. Yes, Let's go to the table. And also, I would like to tell you because I promised also Caddy uh, to tell her about the. Um, Let's say the the, uh, the ingredients just rapidly of the salad that we just made. Sorry that I'm trying to move up the camera, and I will be ooh, going too much up. 
<laughs> so, hello. Hi. <laughs> so first of all, we're going to, gracias, Ruth. We're going to see the, the plate, and I will tell you rapidly the ingredients for the salad, okay? So this is our final result. How beautiful, right? For the Christmas salad, we needed three cups of white potato boiled, previously boiled and cut in squares. Uh, three quarters of a cup of green peas boiled, three quarters of a cup of carrot cut also in squares boiled, uh, two apples, one red, one green, three quarters of a cup of could be celery or cucumber, depends on, um, uh, sorry, he said yolk, not white. Oh, do you mean, white, sorry, the, the white joy, uh, joy and and Sorry, uh, might have made a little mistake or confusion saying that he needed the, the white, not the yolk. Okay, this is for the pisco sour, right, Joy? See, sí, thank you, thank you. Oh, he's um, he probably made a little mistake. Um, so then we need also uh, the pecans, three quarters of a, a cup of pecans. Uh, we also needed the peaches, three quarters of a cup of peaches, two hundred grams of ham, uh, which is what we have here right uh we need also a uh, mayo mayonnaise uh, uh more or less one cup right um but it really is up to you oh and we also need the juice of one key lime for the salad pepper and salt oh and well we are ready to taste this salad can you show the bottles of the drink to take Photos. Yes, of course. I think it would be a good idea to put it in the, in the table, Marek. Uh, what is the name of the salad, please? Jill, um, we know it in Peru as Christmas salad. Ensalada de Navidad. <laughs> Christmas salad. Um, it really doesn't have a, you know, like a one specific name. Also, in the market, some people know it as salad of uh, peaches because it has durazno peaches. And it's, it's the only salad that has uh, the peaches. And um, we, well, don't really use all the name for it. Huh? So, ensalada de Navidad. Uh, oh, the peaches, more or less three quarters of a cup of cut in cubes peaches. Uh -huh. So, you can see the peaches somewhere here, right? So, um, I, I bought a can of peaches. And I just like more or less three pieces of peaches mm -hmm, for that um and that's it that's it so uh, we're going to taste this for you but we wanted first you to have the chance of a picture if you wish to or if you can please send a picture of uh made of, of from today's event uh share it in 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 facebook or send them to me if you have the chance of, of doing that Oh, Jill, muchas gracias. Thank you so much to all the kind people that were able to support with a tip. I know you friends are really very supportive and there are many ways to support, as you know, commenting or sharing. Uh, but as you all know as well, these are free events. We are not being paid by Hago. So uh, we are paid by your generosity, by your support. Uh, and that's what helped us to continue doing these events. So, uh, muchas gracias. Thanks a lot in advance. And also your tip support is not really going directly to us. It is a split with Hago. So we are also uh, like generous with Hago. We all are because we are supporting Hago in what they are doing. So, well, uh, before we taste it, I want to first say, oh, look at this. Nice. It's getting like, I look at, uh, I, I, it seems it's getting bigger, my <laughs> decoration. <laughs> When I bought it, it was like not so big, at least when I put it on. And, and well, okay, it looks good, I hope. Um, so tomorrow and the day after, we have events here in Hago, and we are delighted to share our days in Lima with you all. I, I hope this is bringing happiness and joy to everybody, uh, an opportunity to, to visit my country without being in person, but still having the, the sensation of being here. Uh, we are delighted to share our lives with you all. So tomorrow we're going to a market and we're going to talk about the uh, New Year's Eve traditions. 
in the market. Uh, and lucky charms and lucky, lucky objects you can have, uh, uh, let's say, for having a really good 2023. So I hope to see you tomorrow or maybe next day also spending New Year's Eve with us um exactly at midnight so um thanks a lot for coming if this was the first time you were with me i hope to see you again uh, soon uh, here i am just letting you know where you can support this event with a tip you can do it even after the end of this tour you don't need to do it right now but thanks a lot for that uh if you want to also support a little bit more the channel um you can become our sponsors and if you do that I'm going to give you as a reward, as a, as a present, access to my two books. I am writing one cookbook with all the cook, uh, like uh, cooking events we had, um, with access also to the videos to do this at home with your friends and family. And also uh, another thing very important, I'm writing a guidebook about Lima. So this will go all for free uh, to my sponsors. If you are already my sponsor, please send me a message so I can send the links directly to you. Uh, and also coming soon next year for my sponsors, uh, especially, I will be doing discounts on private cooking sessions. Uh, so, well, this is just a little thing that I want to, you know, give to you also. And that way you can uh, share these cooking experiences with many more people. So, Marek, let's try the food. Okay, and let's try the pisco sour first or food, uh, what is best? Uh, the pisco sour. Pisco first. sour first. Because okay. it's an aperitif. Aperitif. <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs> thank Cheers. you, thank you. Okay, amigos here for a great 2023 2023 for you all have a wonderful year ahead all the best wishes from your friends in lima peru and well uh let's do this vamos mare and how do you remember how we say here in peru arriba, arriba abajo, abajo al centro, centro adentro, adentro. Mm -hmm. wow Marek, this is really good, huh? <laughs> and now let's try this. Mm. And now the salad. Just a little bit more. Mm. Mm. So let's try the salad, Marek. Mm. And Marek, but mm. please come. Come. <laughs> please, please. Everybody wants to try the salad. So let's do this. A little bit of everything. Ooh. This one is good. Mmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Really delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. Try it. Try it at home. Thanks a lot for coming today to my home. And see you soon. Bye bye. Good wishes. Gracias. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Gracias, Mary Lou. Gracias, amiga. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>